Hi and welcome to this Applied Maths video. In this video, we're going to be deriving the kinematic equations of motion using calculus. So this is strongly linked to the differential equation section, but it's also linked to our uniform motion as these are the equations we use in that section. So in this video, we're going to look at the relationship between displacement, velocity, and acceleration. We're going to derive the three key formulas that we use for our uniform acceleration. So that's V is equal to U plus AT, S is equal to UT plus a half AT squared, and V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. And I suppose it's just to know that this could be examined. It is one of our learning outcomes for the applied maths course at both levels. So kinematics is the study of motion of objects without considering the forces causing it. So this is where you probably got introduced to applied maths. You started with your, your equations of motion. We look at uniform acceleration. We tend to go deeper into that using forces later on in the course. So what we're focusing on is the idea of displacement, which we know is a vector quantity and represented by the letter S. We can also see that represented by the letter X in calculus. We have velocity, which is the letter V, again, a vector quantity and acceleration, which is represented by A. So the first thing we want to understand is the relationship between acceleration, velocity and displacement. So acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. So what we mean by that is the acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, which basically means how the velocity changes with respect to time. So when we have a dv dt, one way to think about that is it's the delta of v over the delta of t. So the change in velocity per the change in time. So if we can kind of make sense of that in a bigger in a bigger context, it will help with all of our calculus. So acceleration, if we simplify that, it's how quickly our speed changes. If our speed changes quickly, that means we're accelerating quite a lot. If our speed changes slowly, that means we're not accelerating as much. So think of this as your rates of change. It's all with respect to time. Velocity is the derivative of displacement with respect to time. So we think of that as the rate of change of displacement with respect to time. What we mean by that is um, if somebody travels 100 meters quicker than someone else, they are going faster. That is a higher speed. That is a bigger velocity. And by integrating these two pieces, we're able to work out all of the equations we need for this section. So to simplify this, and um, I'm going to give you kind of a graphic we can work with. This is um, this is good for higher level maths. This is good for applied maths when we get to the differential equation piece. So we start with our displacement, or if you want to simplify that, we can think that with our distance. It is a vector quantity, which means it can be negative. So it is better to think of it like that. And then we have our velocity, which again, is a vector quantity, we have a scalar, which is our speed, and that's represented by V, and we have our acceleration A. So how these are connected, if you know your displacement and want to get to your velocity, we can differentiate. So the change in displacement with respect to a change in time, which we can write as ds dt, that is going to give us velocity. And if we go one more step and go velocity to acceleration, we're finding the rate of change of velocity with respect to time, which is dv dt. And we can actually go straight from displacement to acceleration and talk about that as our second derivative. Now, if you've done your calculus or in just your differentiation even, you'll know that to get the second derivative, you need to get the first derivative first anyway, but it's just a different way to write it. And then if we want to work backwards through this to go from acceleration back to velocity, because velocity is the rate of change, or so because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, we can go and do what we call anti-differentiation or integration. So we can integrate that back. So the velocity is the integral of acceleration with respect to time. And we can do the same here to go from velocity back to displacement 
So S is equal to the integral of velocity with respect to time. So we're going to be using these a little bit more, but this just gives you a nice little high level view of how these three um, variables are interlinked. So just want to talk about another formula that we can use for acceleration. This is something that you don't have to worry about in maths, but we use quite a lot in applied maths. So if S is displacement, and we can then say velocity is the rate of change of displacement, so we call that ds dt, and then acceleration can be written as the rate of change of velocity, so dv dt, and then d squared s dt squared, which is the second derivative of displacement. Now, what that means is we can connect v, s, and t, we can connect um, acceleration with our dv dt. But what would be really good to do is to link acceleration back to displacement rather than having it as a second derivative so we can work with it. So we're going to do that now. We're going to use some partial derivatives. So you may have covered this in maths. It basically is breaking down the derivative we have or we, we want in a different way. So acceleration is dv dt. So I could rewrite that as dv ds times ds dt. Now, what this means is ds on the bottom and ds on the top undo each other, they divide into each other and give us one, leaving us with dv dt. So this effectively gives us the same thing. So why do we want it? Well, this allows us to have dv ds, so differentiate velocity with respect to displacement. So we're taking time out of the equation. And then we have ds dt, which actually, if we go back up here, is just velocity, which means we can write this as v dv ds which gives us acceleration equal to V dV dS, which makes, um, I suppose, an equation that is independent of time. We don't have time coming into it, which can be helpful because sometimes we want to talk about acceleration over a distance and over a change in velocity, and we don't care about the time it takes to do that. So let's jump into our first formula. Let's derive V is equal to U plus AT. So our acceleration is dv dt. So I'm going to start with that and I'm going to write a equals dv dt. This is effectively a differential equation. If you want to see more on differential equations, I've linked the introduction in the description below. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate our dv dt. So bring that dt over. I'm then going to integrate both sides. When we're integrating both sides, we have to be very, very clear about the idea of our constant of integration, so our plus c. One way we can work without bringing in that plus c is by working with limits of integration. So time will always start at zero and go to t. And for velocity, we already have the notation of that. It will start at what we call our initial velocity u, and it will go to our final velocity v. So we're going to integrate the left-hand side, a, with respect to t, which gives us a t. a, in this case, is a constant, and we're going to evaluate that between 0 and t. The integral of dv is just going to be v, and we're going to evaluate that between u and v. That gives us a t minus a times zero is equal to v minus u. A times zero is just zero. And rearranging this, we get our v is equal to u plus a t. So by starting with acceleration is equal to the rate of change of velocity, that allows us to derive this formula. So now let's look at our second formula. We want to derive s is equal to ut plus a half at squared. So we're going to go back to velocity is equal to ds dt. But we're also now going to use the formula we just derived, which is v is equal to u plus at. So we'll start with v equals ds dt. And we're going to bring the dt 
over to the left hand side. However, because velocity can be expressed in terms of t, it's important for us to do that because we want to integrate with respect to time. So we're going to put our u plus a t in there. We're going to integrate both sides. So our time always starts at zero and it's going to go to t. Think of it as the questions. Every time we do a question, um, t really measures the time from the start of the question. For s, displacement, same thing. Displacement is a measure of how far it is displaced from its starting point. So the displacement at any starting point is zero. So this allows us now to integrate. We get ut plus, now we have a t squared, so we're using our rule to add on to the power, divide by this new power, and we're going to evaluate that between t and zero. The integral of ds is going to give us s, which is between zero and s. So this gives us u t plus, we're more familiar with writing this as a t squared, take away, subbing in our zeros. Now, when we sub in our zeros, everything in that second bracket is effectively going to go to zero. Be careful with that. Not all of our substitutions of zero will end in a zero. Uh, for example, if you have e to a power of zero, it's one. If you have cos of zero, it's one. So just be very careful about that. And then we're left with s equals ut plus a half a t squared. So that second formula has been derived. So the last formula we're going to derive in this video is v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. This formula has a v, a u, a and s but it has no time. So we need to think about a formula that will work for us. So we're going to go with acceleration but we're going to use our new formula that we work through which is a is equal to v dv ds. This means there's going to be no time in our answer which is exactly what we want. So that is a equals v dv ds. Let's separate out our dv ds. So I'm going to bring my ds across and leave v dv on the right hand side. And we're going to integrate both sides. Focus on what we're integrating with respect to. The left hand side is s. Displacement, so displacement always starts at zero and will go to s. Velocity is going to start at u, our initial velocity, and go to v, our final velocity. Integrating on the left hand side, a is acting as a constant, so we get a s, and that's going to be, be between 0 and s that we're evaluating it. And then v, um, integrating v dv means we have add 1 to our power, divide by our power, and then we're going to evaluate that between v and u. That gives us a s minus a times 0 is equal to v squared over 2 minus u squared over 2. a times 0 is 0. We have a fraction here. So what we're going to do is we're going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of our fractions. That's going to leave us with 2as is equal to v squared minus u squared. And our final step is just a little bit of rearranging to get us v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. It is possible to derive these formulas without calculus. Um, however, in our specification, it does state that we should be able to derive these with calculus.